Hello all you all. Here is a mini lecture on the Great Schism of 1054. Now, schism means a, a, a separation, uh, a parting of ways. And uh, we've talked about in medieval church history how there was an eastern center of Christianity in Constantinople and a western center of, Constant of Christianity in Rome. Um, the east spoke Greek, the west spoke Latin. Um, some confusion and some challenges arose because of those uh, different ways of speaking, different ways of thinking, and a number of key events took place at which point by 1054 the church in the east and the church in the west decided to part ways. Three key things that I'd like to mention really quickly about that and then we'll look at what happened in 1054. One was the Filioque, or the Easter day, we'll start with that one, the Easter day, the date of Easter. How do we understand when Easter takes place? Well, the East had a way of uh, working out the calendar because Easter is determined by the moon and the seasons and things like this. So it changes every year. So the East had a way of doing this. The West had a different way of doing this and they couldn't agree on the method of deciding what day is Easter going to be on? Well, now, this is really important because Easter is the most significant day in the Christian calendar. And if the East and the West aren't celebrating on the same day, then it looks like we're not a unified church. Well, in some sense, they were beginning to not be a unified church. That was the first thing, thing the date of Easter. The second thing is the Filioque Clause. Now, sometime in the ninth century, we don't know exactly where it originated, but we assume it originated in Spain. There was a little phrase that was added to the Nicene Creed um, in regards to the Spirit. So the Nicene Creed talked about the Holy Spirit and said that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Well, in uh, sometime in the, 19th, in the ninth century, somewhere in Spain, someone, it's, it's supposed that this was uh, said at the behest of Charlemagne, the Holy Roman Emperor, which you'll have to read about in the notes, um, decided to add this little phrase. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, filioque, and the Son. Now, that little addition actually has massive significance, that the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. Uh, lots of theological reasons for that. But the East preferred um, that the Spirit proceeds from the Father, the West, began to adapt this use of the phrase from the Father and from the Son, and so there's a big disagreement there. The third thing, and the final thing, was the issue of communion bread, believe it or not. Um, in the East, communion bread was made with yeast. It was more of a cake substance, and if you're able to go to an Orthodox church, you will see the bread is uh, uh, has leaven in it, has yeast in it, and it is a, a cake. In the West, Unleavened bread was the way to have communion. And so the wafers, as you see today, they're not risen, they're not like a cake, um, they're actually unleavened bread. Now there's obvious reasons for both. So in the East, it was preferred to say that if bread is to be bread, it must have yeast. And if Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, then I need to have yeast in my bread. Whereas the West said that when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, he used unleavened bread because it was the Passover festival. Um, and so we are to use unleavened bread. And so that was a third key thing of disagreement between the East and the West. This all comes to a head in 1054 when the bishop in the West sends a delegation to the patriarch in the East and they meet in Constantinople in Hagia Sophia, that famous church. And the West challenges the East and says that we are going to excommunicate you um, for these things. The issue on the day was actually communion bread. And the East responded by saying that um, you do not have authority over us and we are going to excommunicate you because you are using the wrong kind of communion bread. One thing to note really quickly that the bishop in Rome had a document which was called the Donation of Constantine, remember Constantine, which said that the bishop in Rome would have authority over any other bishops in the empire. Now we know now that that was a forged document, but it was being used by the bishop of Rome 
over and against the patriarch in Constantinople to say that Constantine, the founder of your city, the founder of our Christian empire, um, said that the bishop in Rome had more power than any other bishop in the empire. Ultimately, the East wasn't having it. And on that day, the West excommunicated the East, and the East excommunicated the West. And we call that the Great Schism. And that's the first major split um, within the Christian church. Briefly, that split is beginning to dissolve a thousand years later. And if you look in the news today, Pope Francis in particular is really concerned about bringing the church back together. Um, and the patriarch in Constantinople, or Istanbul, uh, the patriarch in the East, um, his, his uh, current patriarch, is also interested in joining back together. So although it was a great schism in 1054, maybe even in our day, we'll see things change.